welcome to Happy Chip. Today, in Eastern North Carolina, it is wet and cold, and it's gonna snow, of course. Last week it was nice and sunny. Wait a couple of days, the weather will change around here. Anyway, I'm thinking of summer already. Summer wine, that is. It's perfect timing to start brewing summer wines and so that you can enjoy them during the summer. Now I know what you're gonna say, but it's winter time, there's no summer fruit, and you'd be correct. But I'm gonna be using frozen fruit today to make our wine. It's picked at the peak of freshness and quick frozen, so we shall have a very good wine with frozen fruit. You're gonna be asking, what kind of wine are we making? Well, when I think of summer fruit, the first one that comes to mind is strawberries. Those are my favorite. So we're gonna make some strawberry wine. Sounds delish? So let's get brewing. First thing on the list is going to hydrate our yeast. I'm gonna put in a little bit of water in my little cup. This is uh, filtered cool water. Um, no chlorine, no fluoride. A little bit of water. Uh, I've got yeast today. We're using Lalvin EC1118. Now this is, you're going to be saying, that's a champagne yeast. Yes, it is. And the reason I'm using this is my goal is to make this a sparkling strawberry wine. So I need the strong yeast to be able to survive up to like a 14 or 15 percent alcohol and still have some yeast left over and hopefully some sugar left over to make a sparkling wine and we'll get to that later on when we're ready for that but that's what i'm using today i've got a half packet here so and i'm just making a gallon of wine so that's all we need is a half packet of the yeast today so we're going to Hydrate this, get this going, wake them up, and then we'll have to set aside here. Let me get it mostly off my spoon. There we go. All right. So I'm going to set this aside here and let those wake up a little bit. Now, like I said, I've used frozen strawberries. So last night, I had them in a bowl and I had them defrosted. I also put in the sugar with them. Uh, we are using two pounds of white sugar. So let's deal with these strawberries now. This is my bowl. I'm going to put them in a uh, brewing bucket today. Because we have such bulk fruit here, they're not going to fit into my normal glass demijohns. And this will be a whole lot easier because we do have to kind of stir it up for the first mm, seven to ten days so the fruit stays wet and they won't start molding on us. We don't want mold in our wine. That's not a good thing. So everything, like I have said in previous videos, everything has been sanitized at, in my star sand and just sit and wait here for me to start. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, brewing bucket. It has been sanitized with star sand. I'm going to put it down here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Well, you know, so I'm not covered up. And I'm going to pour in my strawberries that have been macerating all night long. I've got a little potato masher that's going to mash those up. Oh, it's, they smell so good. Oh, my stars. These are going to be delightful. And then with the sugar, it's made a lovely syrup. There's a little bit of a crust, but i got some uh, liquid here that I can uh, get that off the bowl and into the bucket. It's in a four-pound bag. Whole strawberries. You can do uh, sliced, pre-sliced strawberries anything like that. If you do uh, fresh strawberries, you'll want to probably slice them up to kind of break, help break them down. Or you could freeze them the night before, if you're planning on this, freeze them and then defrost them again. The freezing will actually produce more juice because it breaks the cell walls 
of the fruit to release more liquid and more flavor, more juice. Okay. I'm pour the strawberries in my brewing bucket down here. Hope I don't spill everything all over the place. A little bit on the chair. Oh, okay, so we got our strawberries in our brew bucket down here. I'll be bringing it back up here in just a minute. Okay, so now what I want to do is get all this sugar and all this um, strawberry juice out from this bowl and into the brew bucket. We don't want to miss any drop of strawberry flavor. I've got a cup of hot tea here. I brewed one cup of boiled hot water with one black tea bag, steeped it for a while, at least 15 minutes until it's lukewarm, and took the tea bag out. So we're going to put this in this bowl here to kind of swish around and get any of the residual sugars and strawberry bits that are stuck to the bowl. So here goes that. It's still a little warm, but it's not overly hot. So, um, But it's enough to kind of um, loosen up the sugar. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to pour this into the brew bucket. There. Okay, I'm going to bring this back up. All right. I think I can sit down now a little bit for the moment. <laughs> okay, so we have our strawberries, our sugar, and our black tea in here. The black tea provides a little bit of tannin and a little bit of mouthfeel at the end of the brewing session. Um, strawberry wine can be a little bit on the light side, so this will give it a little bit of tannin, a little mouthfeel there. Alrighty. Oh, this smells so good. It'll be beautiful. All right. The next thing that we need to do is put in uh, juice of one lemon. This is the acidic portion of the brew. This will brighten the strawberry flavor um, as well. So there's that juice of one lemon. I'm also going to put in half a vanilla bean. This is a spent vanilla bean that I have used in my homemade vanilla essence. And so it's been in there for a little while and it's probably mm, on its last leg. But I do want a little bit of a vanilla essence in the strawberry wine. I think vanilla goes really well with strawberries. I love putting a dash of vanilla uh, essence in with my strawberries and cream. So I think this will go really well. So it is a spent vanilla bean, um, but it's still got, you know, nice flavor to it and a little bit of that rummish kind of you know, smell to it, because um, I like making my vanilla essence out of rum, not vodka or something like that. So we're not going to do anything special to it, we're just going to dump it in. All right, stir that around. Now, if you don't have a spent vanilla bean, you certainly can use a fresh vanilla bean, um, just a half of one. Um, it may be a stronger vanilla flavor at the end, but it's only going to be in there for the seven to ten days. Um, so it's not going to be in there for, you know, weeks on weeks. So I think it'd be okay. If you don't have a vanilla bean or can't really afford one, you can use vanilla extract. Make sure that it is a 100% vanilla extract. I might say maybe about a teaspoon or so should be just fine. All right. So there's that. I think I've got everything in except for the water and my yeast. Um, I've got just under a gallon of uh, fresh water. Now, the bucket is short about a half gallon so far, but a lot of it is fruit, and I really do want a gallon of wine. So I have kind of hedged up a little bit on the water. If I have a little extra, oh well. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put the water in next. All of it. 
it was probably like two or three cups shy of, of a full gallon. All right, got that. Oh, and I've got little specks of the vanilla bean coming out. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pitch our yeast next. So we got all of it. I mean, it looks like a lot, but really there's the fruit and stuff that's hanging down in the bottom. All right, pitching the yeast. We're gonna give this one more stir and then we're gonna measure the specific gravity on this. Over so you can kind of see me a little bit better. Got all sorts of stuff here. All right, here's my graduated cylinder and my hydrometer. And I've got my turkey baster. So since we've got chunks in here, I really don't want chunks in here. So I've got a small sieve that I'm gonna push down so I can just get juice. I saw this on somebody's site and I thought that was just pure genius. So hopefully I can do this without spilling it completely. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Just be very careful. There we go. I don't want to overfill it. Okay. All right. And now let's see. Alright, look at that beautiful color. I'm going to cover this just in case there's any visitors that want to come back. We don't want them in our wine. Alright. Alright, so we're going to read our specific gravity to see what our numbers are. Book out. It's got my recipe on here, and then uh, I get to write my notes on here as to uh, what the specific gravity is, and then once I taste it and all that. So it's a good idea to get a little notepad and write your recipe down. That way, if you want to remake it, you can. You're not just guessing. And then uh, go from there. Okay, our specific gravity is one point. Zero six zero. That's our starting specific gravity. All right. So let's go ahead and get this back in. Now the strawberries probably do have some sugars that are in with them that might actually skew this number a bit, which I'm not worried about too badly. So all right. And Seal that puppy up. I've got my airlock. It's already filled up with the sanitizer water. Put that into that hole there. Make sure that's there. All right. We're going to label this bucket. I'm going to keep this relatively close by so that I can stir it every day that I won't, won't forget to. And in seven to ten days, like I said, we will come back and uh, rough rack this. I'm going to take a reading then as well to see where we're at also. Um, and I may end up adding more sugar. I have a feeling that this is not going to be as sweet as I'm hoping it will be. But it's a wait and see kind of game. So, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day. See ya. Bye. say what well, there's no summer fruit out there it's frozen peaked at <laughs>